everybody. So if you can't tell um, by the sound of my voice and just my general um, appearance at the moment, it is first thing in the morning. To be fair, it's not that early in the morning, but I have just woken up. It's the weekend, so I've slept in a little bit more. I just thought I would do another little day in the life video today. Take you guys around with me, see what we get up to, you know, the usual. So let's do a little bit of skincare. Um, the, the date as I'm filming this is May 9th and um, it is minus five with the wind chill today and we're expecting wet snow here in Toronto. So that's that situation. The past few days we've been in a polar vortex. So it's just been insanely cold and I'm over it if we're honest. <laughs> Can you hear that plane or helicopter? Guys, I love doing my skincare in the morning and at night. <laughs> I've started using the Drunk Elephant Vitamin C. It's called C Firma Day Serum. I don't remember if I was using it when I did my last like self-isolation video, but I've since started using it and I really, really like it. So like I think I mentioned earlier, it's Saturday. And every Saturday, and Sunday actually, every weekend, for a number of years now, my parents have always just done like a really gorgeous breakfast spread. That's really nice. I did actually bake some bread again last night or this morning and one of the main comments I got on that last video was I really wanted to see what the bread turned out like. Like, why didn't you show us the bread? So I will be showing you what the bread maker bread looks like. All right, let's go get some breakfast. My dad just came upstairs and told me the snow started, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on camera, but it's definitely snowing. Wow. This is the breakfast bread we're working with today. So first and foremost, we've got the bread maker bread. This is what it looks like and uh, I'll show you when we cut into it. They actually don't have bread flour at the grocery store right now, so I've made this all with just regular all-purpose flour. We've got some cheese here and some kalbasa. This is the vegan banana bread that I recently made that we're just gonna finish off. If you want the recipe for that, I will link it for you guys. These are my absolute favorite almonds in the whole world. It's the Trader Joe's dry roasted unsalted almonds. If you have not tried them, run, don't walk, they're so good. The two spreads we have today, the Bon Maman Dolce de Leche caramel spread and my favorite in the whole world black currant so good some fresh strawberries because you need your vitamin C and just some unsalted butter dad's making the first cut into the bread while you cut I'm just gonna get that good crumb shot there beautiful you excited to eat pup oh I can't wait it's always good homemade help that's true first bite my mom and I both like the end piece the most <laughs> <laughs> Wait, our two bites? First piece is always just bread and butter, so you can really like appreciate the taste, you know? Happy breakfast, everybody. So it was sunny about two minutes ago, and this is the mid-May weather that we are experiencing here in Toronto today. Back in my bathroom, had some breakfast, which was delicious. I got a little bit more water for my All-American water bottle. <laughs> about to leave the house now to go to the grocery store and buy a couple things for a care package that we're dropping off at some family friends for their anniversary. As most of you will know, during this time, obviously, we're not like seeing any friends, but people People are still celebrating exciting life occasions and there's birthdays and anniversaries and all that so we're just doing what little things that we can for the people in our life to make it feel special for them just gonna drive over to their house and like leave it at the front door and hopefully brighten their day a little bit so why not use this opportunity to put on a little bit of makeup um i've already done my brows a little bit it's kind of funny because most people here wear a mask when they're at the grocery store so by the time you you've gone to the store you've left you've taken your mask off all your makeup's on your mask and you can't see have your makeup but i know i have it on and i know i've got on a cute lip so that's all that really matters concealer using a little bit of this how have you guys been doing how have you been keeping busy oh i did want to say it is so nice the amount of people that have been tagging me on instagram with all of their banana bread and lemon blueberry loaf recipes that they've made like honestly it makes me so happy that you guys are enjoying the videos and that you're making it yourself and all of your stuff looks so good like I'm, I'm very impressed i mean i knew you could do it i always believed in you guys from the beginning but it really actually makes me really happy so yeah thank you guys for tagging
tagging me, please continue to tag me. It really genuinely like makes my day. Just wanted to say thank you. It's very sweet. So I just put a little bit of eyeshadow on my eyes. I use this um, Annabelle Gleam. It's like a really pretty like pale gold color. As I'm filming this, it's also Mother's Day here in Canada tomorrow. So I'm also gonna pick up some flowers from the grocery store. It's been interesting celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and all those sorts of special occasions because you're not necessarily able to like purchase a gift because so many places are closed. So I think it's forced people to get more creative about how they celebrate these milestones and I think it's really highlighted what's most important about these days, which is not gifts, but like spending time with the people you love and all that good stuff. Speaking of highlight, this Becca highlighter. <laughs> this is an opal. I'm just gonna use this down my nose, tip of my nose. I'm gonna use this Marcel highlighter on my cheeks. I've had this for, actually, you know what? Let's not get into that. It still works, you know? It's a really pretty highlight. Look, I don't wanna waste it. I haven't even gotten close to using it all up. You can also use this as eyeshadow, which I have done in the past. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. Why not? She glows. So I'm gonna use my Glossier Cloud Paint in Haze. Some of that on my cheeks. I've made the most progress on this tube. I have a few, I have three. So I've got Haze, Storm, and Dawn. Haze is definitely my favorite, as you can see, but I love all of these. And you can also like mix them up, which is good. I love these. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna put on a bit of the boy brow through my brows just to keep them in place. The lighting in my bathroom is not great. I have a window, but it's here. So I'm not actually getting the like natural light, but I'll see the true results in the car. <laughs> Isn't that how it always is you'll do your makeup and then you'll look in the car mirror and it's like oh my god i mean not all the time but sometimes let's do eyeliner why not we've made it this far I'm just gonna use my Marc jacobs BRB. okay eyeliner done even threw in a little bit of a uh, blue in there because i'm feeling crazy today this might be controversial but i'm not gonna put on any mascara just eyeliner today let's do a lip aka the most irrelevant part of this whole makeup look because my mouth will be completely covered by a mask i'm just gonna go in with this Dior, what is it called again? Lip Glow. This has become my like everyday favorite lip product of the past few months. This is also really pretty layered on top of other lipsticks. Just to add a little bit of a glow. So that's the look. Probably gonna throw on um, maybe like a more fun pair of earrings. Put on some clothes and hit the road and brave the uh, snowstorm outside apparently. <laughs> Braved the grocery store. Got our uh, Mother's Day flowers in the back here. Very glad we went a day early because the lines were already pretty crazy. It stopped snowing, which is very exciting, but it is still cloudy, so we're not totally in the clear. As you can tell, I'm still very much in um, clothing that I had hoped I would have already put away into storage by May, but alas, that is uh, not the case. Blue sky peeking through. Thanks so much. Thank you. Just got home and a uh, special shout out to the inside of my mask that's covered in the makeup I put on this morning. Amazing. This lighting is, it is what it is. So I wanted to do a little haul for you guys of some items I recently was very kindly sent to buy 5am from the lovely Michael Bailing. All of these are gonna be super great cozy quarantine fits because as we all know, we're all living in sweats and that's what a lot of these items are. So the first thing, which is not sweat pant related, but super cute is this bucket hat. I actually haven't really like caught on to the bucket hat trend, but might be time to start. Only good things is right. So that's her. Should I just keep her on for the rest of this uh, rest of this video? This is how Sam always wears her bucket hats to set. She's always in one of these at work. <laughs> Sam, do you approve? <laughs> kind of like it. Okay, anyway. the next thing is this super cozy black hoodie. It's got a rabbit on it. It says 5 a.m. This piece is embroidered. And yeah, you got a big pocket in the front for all your secrets. Then a similar model in this beautiful like baby pink color. But this one's got Mother Earth on it. Also, these are so, so soft and comfortable. They're all like nice and fleecy on the inside, which is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. <laughs> the next item is probably my personal favorite, but it is these sweatpants. It's a pair of gray sweatpants. They're tapered at the bottom, which I love. And again, they've got an embroidered 5 a.m. on the like front by your, uh, by your thigh. So we'll definitely be living in those. The last item is this little crop top. This will be really cute, I think, for like workouts or hikes. So yeah, you guys, that is it. I will leave links down below if you're interested in shopping any of these items. But yeah, very excited to live in my new cozy clothes.
So we're back in the kitchen and I've decided that for Mother's Day brunch tomorrow, I want to make little apple turnover pie things. I've posted them on my Instagram story before and a few of you asked for the recipe. They are so, so easy to make. I feel like they don't need their own video. So I'm gonna quickly whip them up now and sort of take you through how I do that. So I'm gonna start by chopping up my apples. I'm just using Granny Smith. I'm gonna cube these. You can use honestly any apples you like. The first time I made this recipe, I actually used I think it might have even been Macintosh. So whatever you have in your house is fine. The nice thing about Granny Smith is that they've got that tartness to them, which I think marries really well with cinnamon and just the warm flavors you're gonna infuse into your filling. So this um, apple turnover recipe is sort of like a hodgepodge of a few different recipes that I found online. Oh, I just realized probably should have peeled the apples first. Off to a great start. It's funny, cause I feel like I'd made the exact same mistake the first time I made this recipe. So I'm just gonna peel the half that I haven't chopped yet. Honestly, I feel like it's fine if you do decide to leave the peel on. It's where all the nutrition is anyway, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna peel this. There you go, just did like a rough peel. There's still, still a little bit of the skin on the ends there. All right, I just moved the camera up a little bit because I feel like it was cutting my head off earlier. So I'm chopping up about one cup of apples right now. One of my Christmas gifts this year was a one year long masterclass subscription and Gordon Ramsay has a like cooking course on there and I've been needing to watch it because I really want to learn how to chop things properly. At this point I'm just plain old guessing. Peeling apple number two. Sorry if you can hear my oven. We're just making dinner over here and the fans uh, making a little bit of noise. There's definitely more than a cup here but honestly the more the merrier. I feel like it's always better to have more filling than not enough and whatever you don't use in your pie you can just put in a glass jar and use it as a topping for like pancakes or waffles or oatmeal. So you've got options. Dice my apples, that's what they look like. You can chop them smaller than this if you want. I find this is a pretty good size. You can see some of them are a little bit bruised, which is fine. Angle change. We've moved on to the stove. I just got out a nonstick pan. This is what we're gonna make our filling in. And I'm making this well ahead of time because we wanna give our filling a chance to cool because we don't wanna put hot filling into like our cold butter puff pastry. So you wanna start by heating your pan up to like medium high heat. We're also gonna put adult butter putting about that much butter in. Just gonna let our butter start to melt, cover the bottom of our pan, and they go. Oh. Make sure to get them all in the pan and not on your stove. Move the apples around a little bit, get them nicely coated, and then we're gonna throw in about two tablespoons of sugar. So to our apples, we are gonna add sugar. You can use white or brown. I prefer brown, just cause when it heats up and starts to caramelize, I prefer the texture it gets. Don't worry if your brown sugar is hard like mine because it'll be fine when it starts to warm up on the pan. My brown sugar clumps are in, so you can see already when you start moving it around and it starts to melt, it totally breaks apart. So you're just gonna move this all around and make sure your apples get nicely coated in that sugar. To this, we're gonna add about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Sprinkle that all over, mix it up again and about a tablespoon of lemon juice. This is about half a lemon, so I'm just gonna squeeze that right into my pan. So this is what it should look like when everything comes together. Your apples are gonna start to soften. So what I like to do with this filling is just give it a little taste test once everything is in and see if I wanna add more cinnamon, more sugar. Let's get a piece here. Mmm, okay, no, it's perfect. I also just wanna show you guys how the brown sugar is gonna act. That sort of stringy, caramelly texture you're seeing is the brown sugar. And that's it, it's super quick and easy. Filling is done. So I'm just gonna let this cool until I make my pies a little later today. All right guys, it is a lot later now. It's currently 10 o'clock. So now we're gonna get started on our little apple pies. Are they apple pies? Are they turnovers? I don't know. Are they delicious? Absolutely. We've already made our filling, which is still in my pan. It's fully cooled now, so it's definitely ready to go into our puff pastry. If you're feeling ambitious, you are welcome to make your own puff pastry. I'm not doing that here today. We are using store-bought. We just purchased this at the Russian store. You can get it, I feel like, pretty much any grocery store. So I just pulled this out of my freezer probably around five o'clock, so it's totally malleable and ready to go. So first thing we wanna do is flour our surface. Spread that out. Gonna open up our puff pastry. So this one comes in a long sheet like this. So I'm gonna start rolling it out and I'm gonna attempt to get maybe 10 pastries. 
This is my rolling pin. It is a marble rolling pin that I got for $2 from a content sale. I think they used to sell these at Ikea and I really love the marble because it's really nicely weighted so it makes it super easy to like spread your dough really really thin. I'm just gonna start rolling this out. I'll be honest with you, I'm actually not that good at uh, rolling out pastry but having it start in a rectangle shape I feel like makes it much easier to achieve the end goal of a rectangle. We've got it for about this thinness. I'm just gonna give it a little lift to make sure it hasn't stuck to the surface of my counter. Now we're gonna start cutting it. So I think I'm gonna start by cutting it into three strips and then go from there. Make little incisions. Just freehanding this honestly. So you've got our three strips. Just gonna gently separate them here. Then I'm gonna cut each of those strips in half again. And then each of those halves into three. So by that math, we're gonna end up with nine pastries from this specific puff pastry that I've used today. So I'm gonna get out my tablespoon measuring spoon and pretty much just start scooping my filling directly onto the puff pastry. So we'll start up here. I'm gonna start with about that much. Carefully just spoon it on. Then we're gonna take another piece of puff pastry and place it on top. I just kind of freehand this so if the top piece is a little smaller, I literally just gently kind of pull the sides out like this. And then you're gonna take a fork, dip it in a little bit of flour, and firmly just start pressing down the sides. You'll go all the way around. I just remembered that in the original recipe, they actually egg washed the sides of the pastry. Now I didn't do that the first time I made these, but thinking maybe I'll try that this time just to see if it makes a difference. But let's finish up with this one first. In case you don't have egg wash, you can totally still get them closed. And you get this really nice sort of rustic pattern all around the edges, which I personally really like. And I honestly feel like the less perfect it looks, more sort of artisanal the pastry comes off. So let's get our egg. <laughs> Gonna get out my pastry brush. So let's try this one. I'm gonna go into the egg here. Just wash the sides here. Anyway, I'm gonna finish all these off and then I will show you what they look like. So these are the finished product. So like I said, the egg wash definitely helped keep them closed. And now the last thing we're gonna do is just make some incisions in the top. And just gently cut into the pastry. I'm gonna do three incisions. You wanna make sure not to go too deep so you're not penetrating the bottom of the pastry. So now we're gonna transfer our pastries onto a baking sheet that I'm gonna line with some parchment paper and cover them very tightly with foil because I'm not gonna bake these until tomorrow morning. I'm just gonna leave them in the fridge, which you can totally do. That's a great thing about this recipe is you can make it ahead of time. All right, so it's all covered here. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight. The idea is you're not letting air get in and like dry your pastry out. I'm gonna pop this into the fridge. That is it for tonight, you guys, but I will check back in tomorrow morning. I'm gonna show you how to bake the pastry, what it looks like when it's finished, and just give you a general overview of Mother's Day brunch and quarantine. It'll be a lot of fun, so I'll see you tomorrow. It is currently 10 o'clock in the morning. I've got pancakes on the go, and my oven just finished preheating to 400 degrees, so I'm gonna pop in my apple pies. First, I'm gonna give them a quick egg wash, and then we're gonna put them in the oven, so. Just wash over each one of the pastries, making sure to get the edges as well. I've spaced them out a little bit so they have some more room to puff up, and now we're gonna pop them in the oven. Mm. Those are in the oven. I've set the timer to 25 minutes. I've already started to set the table a little bit. There's my mom's orchid for Mother's Day. I'm just gonna keep cooking for now. Guys, this is the final result. Look at these pies. Mm. All right, the final product. We've got our apple pies, some blueberry pancakes, fresh berries, some spreads down there in syrup, and uh, just some cards, of course. From mama. Hey guys, so it's much, much later now. We're actually currently getting ready for dinner. My dad is just outside barbecuing. It was a pretty chill day, to be honest. I just spent it hanging out with my mom, which was the best. I feel very grateful that I'm actually able to spend this day with her because obviously for a lot of people, considering the circumstances, not everyone is getting to see their moms. I did quickly want to talk to you guys about something because I got a pretty exciting package in the mail. <laughs> it's very exciting for me. Probably for some people, it would not be exciting at all. But I will preface this by saying that one of my 
absolute favorite people to watch right now on YouTube is a fellow Torontonian named Alexandra Gator. I'll link her channel down below for you guys. She does absolutely incredible interior design home decor videos and she specializes in rentals and small spaces. So all of her videos are really, well, renter friendly if you live in an apartment or a small condo. I definitely recommend you check out her channel. Honestly, even if you're not in your own space yet, if you're not renting anything yet, just to get ideas for when you do move. She's also just got great little, you know, design tips and DIY ideas for your room. I'll link her down below, check her out you won't regret it. She's great. If you already watch Alexandra, then this item won't be that strange to you. She's pretty much the unofficial spokesperson of this label maker. It's this really cool like retro label maker. The labels, actually you can see it down here, look like what you see down there in that red block text. Obviously just great for general organization. What I really want to do is to decant my spices and to put like labels on the new little jars. Thank you, Alexandra. I'm very excited to use it. Hope everyone has had a fabulous weekend or a fabulous day, depending on when you're watching it. I've just been resting my arm on my knee because this camera is actually not that easy to hold for like prolonged periods of time. But anyway, that is it, you guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not already subscribed and you would like to be, then feel free to click the subscribe button. Better yet, if you want to be notified whenever I post a video, then click the bell notification and you'll know every time that I post. And I'll see you on next week. Bye.